long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. It's Steph. Welcome back to the Cantina. Normally, you don't see my little face on the um, in the uploads. I don't. I don't normally do stuff like this. But for this next video, I pretty much wanted to kind of do teacher student kind of thing here. And while I'm not a teacher, I do know a little bit about political advertising, and I do know a little bit about PR. Um, I'll give you a little uh, background. I worked as a volunteer while I was working at the Leadership Institute for uh, George, the George W. Bush campaign in 2000. And um, where I worked, it's a, it's a conservative nonprofit that helps get people who are campaigners out on the street. Like Mitch McConnell went there. Uh, but still, a lot of really good people. Alex Mooney, who is a uh, an old acquaintance of mine from a long time ago, he's a congressman from West Virginia, and others um, who have gone on to be highly successful in conservative politics. And they do camp, uh, how you run elections, how to be a campaign manager, uh, marketing, etc. And we did a forum on uh, polling and advertising, Kellyanne Conway, if you remember her, she was Kellyanne Fitzpatrick at the time, and uh, she had the polling company, and she came in, and we got a chance to talk to her and listen, listen to what she had to say to the staff and the students that were involved at the Leadership Institute, and we were talking about advertising. Okay, now the first advertising, Advertisement, I'm going to show you as a positive advertisement. This is something from when I was a kid. I was 16 years old, uh, 15, 16 years old, 1984, Ronald Reagan uh, campaign. I'm going to use presidential campaigns because um, there people will recognize what I'm doing here. But I want to talk about positive advertising First, positive advertising does work. It worked for Reagan. Reagan, um, as far as I remember, maybe someone else can jack my memory, but he never went negative on Walter Mondale. Um, when he was campaigning uh, against uh, Jimmy Carter, you know, when you do it, it's like that there's negative ad campaigning and there's negative campaigning and the kind of campaigning that Reagan did in 1980 was vastly different from the next video I'm going to show you. Okay, but this is positive and it works. All right. Different voting public at the time. Where was America? Rising up from the ashes of Vietnam, Watergate, Jimmy Carter's presidency, um, etc. And the feeling of optimism and can-do spirit was alive and well. Now, there are people in the um, uh, there are people you know that will tell you no it was bad well look if they're Democrats are going to say that no matter what um, but you know they there were Democrats that voted in on mass for Reagan because they loved him they loved him uh, he had something that JFK brought into the to the picture, and that was optimism, adult, a vision for where the country was going, and the ability to see opportunity to make peaceful gestures, Mikhail Gorbachev, when he could. Okay, and all the while doing that, growing the military. Um, 
and the world saw what would happen if they screwed with us during Desert Storm. And that was just Saddam Hussein. Okay. If you had that military and you had bin Laden attack the, the Twin Towers in 2001, the world would be vastly different because that's how big it was. That's how professional it was. That's how intrepid they were. And, and uh, it was just, it, was, it wasn't just an enormous obstacle for the bad guys. It was the same, probably one of the single most important things that brought the Soviet Union to its knees. Okay, that's another story for another day. This ad I'm gonna show you is an ad from the Reagan campaign in 1984. You will recognize it if you're uh, my age or, or have you know, taken any sort of political science classes. Um, and you're going to see why he won. So just watch this. It's morning again in America. Today, more men and women will go to work than ever before in our country's history. With interest rates at about half the record highs of 1980, nearly 2,000 families today will buy new homes, more than at any time in the past four years. This afternoon, 6,500 young men and women will be married. And with inflation at less than half of what it was just four years ago, they can look forward with confidence to the future. It's morning again in America. And under the leadership of President Reagan, our country is prouder and stronger and better. Why would we ever want to return to where we were less than four short years ago? So, yeah, that ad worked. That ad worked perfectly. Okay. Um, now let's go into a different kind of thing. Negative advertising. People don't like it. If, when people see negative ads, they just turn them off. It works. It works a lot better than, neg than, than positive advertising. And when it doesn't work, there's an ad that I thought was a pretty brutal anti-Obama uh, ad back in 2008, but it just didn't resonate. It was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a negative ad. It did not resonate. But when it works, it really, really works. And in 1964, presidential race was Lyndon Johnson, who took over for Jack Kennedy after he was murdered, likely by people behind Lyndon Johnson. I'm going to say it. Um, and Barry Goldwater, Barry Goldwater, Senator from Arizona, famous libertarian, conservative. Uh, my oldest sister before she lost her f fucking mind was a Goldwater girl. Um, he was very much anti-Soviet, uh, and he would basically challenge them. Uh, he did not really believe that you could actually have detente with them. So he said, but we never really got a chance to find out what a president, what a Goldwater presidency would look like because of what happened. Johnson, on the other hand, uh, had the Vietnam War he was escalating. And, um, you know, Jack Kennedy was pulling people out before he was killed and then of course, Johnson uh, rescinded all that and put, you know, so-called advisors on the ground. And Lyndon Johnson, you know, had a lot of American blood on his hand. But he was painting Barry Goldwater as a warmonger. And this advertisement worked. Okay. Uh, negative advertisements like this are never true. They're never real. But for some reason, Barry Goldwater didn't have the personality to rise above this. If this had been anti-Reagan, Reagan would have wiped him out. Would have wiped this out. Okay. Trump would have wiped this out. Uh, they try to paint him a racist. It doesn't work. They try to paint him 
as an anti-Semite, it's like his daughter's Jewish. You know, he's got grandkids who are Jewish. Um, so it depends on the candidate. Barry Goldwater was a fierce conservative libertarian. Uh, and he was an anti-communist and was not shy to tell the entire planet that. And I think a lot of people in the upper ranks of the bureaucracy in the United States and probably at the UN was scared to death of him because people who are as loud as Barry Goldwater tend to keep their promises. Okay. Um, but he just did not have the charisma to overcome this. And because people already sort of had a negative view, it's kind of like the negative view people had of Nixon after the Kennedy-Nixon debates. I mean, Jack's sitting there looking like, you know, he's probably, you know, stoned out of his mind on whatever they were giving him to keep him, you know, on his toes. Uh, but, um, you know, Tricky Dick, you know, five o'clock shadow, he just didn't look trustworthy. All right, and, and, and TV changed the way politics are. I think had it been on radio, Tricky Dick would have won, would have been president at that time. But because it wasn't, and we got to see both candidates, Kennedy's natural charisma came through. Here, you have two really lacking of charisma candidates. I mean, my dog's droppings have more charisma than Lyndon Baines Johnson. A guy, by the way, I hate, I despise. Barry Goldwater, not much different, not much different. And um, it would take something like this upcoming ad for him to be uh, run over. This is by far the most effective negative ad in presidential politics. Okay, and it's called the Daisy ad. But you gotta go back in the 1960s. This was, this thing came out before I was a twinkle in my daddy's eyes. Um, but if you take uh, political science, if you are in, into politics, if you are into advertising, you will know this ad because it's historically significant. Both ads that I've shown that are political are, okay? And after it's done, I'm going to tell you why I told you about these. Okay, so watch. This is a little bit of history for you. One, two, three, four, five, seven, six, six, eight, nine, nine. Yeah. the stakes to make a world in which all of God's children can live or to go into the dark. We must either love each other or we must die. Vote for President Johnson on November 3rd. The stakes are too high for you to stay home. So that was uh, the, the Daisy ad. The Lyndon Johnson uh, uh, 1964 campaign ad, probably the most famous negative ad in U.S. presidential politi political history, campaign history. Um, and like I said, neither candidate had a lot of charisma. Neither candidate was out of the box, charming, you know, Jack Kennedy, Ronald Reagan, whatever. Um, and the company, the country was really, you know, could have gone either way. Johnson did this ad. And look, Barry Goldwater doesn't help himself back then, all right? But he, so this ad really did help Johnson. When a negative ad works, it works really well. Now, why am I doing this? Because part two of this will be coming with this 
video is about the Walt Disney Company's ad that Iger put out yesterday called Vote Disney. And it's basically addressing the proxy war. And we'll talk more about that. And I want you guys to understand where I'm coming is that it's, this is very much like a presidential election. This is p political, all right? And then of course, the 800 pound gorilla in the room, Elon Musk. So, great for part two. I'll see you guys around the galaxy.